Listen, I want to encourage you guys today. We are at a critical time where love has got to win. And I'm telling you, if you only love people who believe like you, look like you, talk like you, and act like you, you are proving you really have a really small portion of love. You know what? You know one of the most incredible ways to show you love someone? It's to love someone. Let me grab something to hold my arm up because I got to hold this here. It's to love someone who's different than you. Love someone who believes differently than you. Go love someone who's at a different point in their journey than you. Go love someone who maybe isn't down the road of growth where you are, or maybe they've made different decisions because God gave them a free will. You have a free will given to you from the creator of the universe. And while I believe that we all need to have convictions and we all need to have things that govern how we live. As a matter of fact, if you don't think you do, you do. Just watch the way you live. Here's the thing. Don't be politically correct today and only hang out with people who are just like you. Don't be politically correct today and only be kind to people who are just like you. I dare you to love people who are different than you. Happy Veterans Day, my friends, and happy Sandy's going to declare it Love Day. Because here's the deal. If God Almighty, the creator of the universe, gave us a free will to decide however we want and to choose you this day who you will serve, that means that we, as his teeny tiny little humans, should be loving people who are different than us. Because you know what? That means that people are going to do things differently. That means because God gave them a free will, they're going to do things differently. You know what? When they don't love you back, Haiti, that means you just got to love them from a distance. I got some family members I got to love with really big boundaries. Can I get an amen? Because unfortunately, they can get really toxic. That doesn't mean I don't love them. Loving people doesn't mean you have everybody over for dinner. Loving people doesn't mean... Oh, I just love you like I do my close, intimate friends. But what it does mean is that I love you with respect. I love you with honor. I love you because you made a choice and you're a human being. And God made both of us to be human beings. And we might end up on different roads along our path. But if we intersect, I'll tell you what. Unity with diversity is way more powerful than unity with conformity. If somebody's sharpening your iron today because they are different... The Bible says that iron sharpens iron and love covers a multitude of yuckies. And so sometimes we might not even get to where God wants us to until we start getting around people who are different than us. You know, as a business person, I've got to love people who believe differently than me because all different kinds of people show up in my classes. And it's changed me. It's made me more powerful. And I don't have waterproof mascara on, but I'll tell you what. When I have a 100 people in a room who all believe, some of them differently than I do, and I can look into their spirit, and I can look into their eyes, I say to myself, what a blessed woman am I to have this opportunity to love people people right where they're at. We may not be best friends. We might not always agree on things and we might only be together at this intersection of time for a few moments or for a few days. And then we have to go on our separate ways and our separate paths. But through that moment that we intersected together, I am more powerful. I am made more perfect in love because they're different than me. And I get to choose to love. I get to find the things that we agree on. I get to find the things that we can defend. Like, for example, if tomorrow our nation was being bombed, I wouldn't care who the hell you voted for. I would cover you. I'd want to hide in safety with you. I'd want to run in some kind of military vehicle with you. I'd want to protect your babies like I'd want to protect my babies. You get what I'm saying? But sometimes through the working out 
of our work day and our work life. It can get like, you know, it can get like sandpaper. And so it's interesting. Sometimes I tell people to unfollow me who believe differently than me because their mouth is spewing out hate. Their mouth is spewing out violence. Their mouth is spewing out like just division. And the thing is, if that person's at that point where they can't walk with people who are different and they, they don't, I mean, I get like that. I, I get that. I was there many years ago because of my own fractured self, because of where I was. So they have a free will to go follow somebody else. I got to let my doggies in and get up to the VIP mastermind. But I'm telling you, get around some people who are a little differently than you and you're going to get a whole lot stronger. You're going to be a whole lot better. You're going to be a better person. You're going to see the world differently. Um, and let me just be radical here, can I? Because that's how Jesus wired me. You know, I just came out of a... Oh, 24 plus year marriage where being myself wasn't always safe and being who I am wasn't always safe. And so like even on my Facebook page, sometimes I wouldn't bother saying some stuff because I was dealing with crap in my home. Why the heck would I want to deal with crap on Facebook? <laughs> Connect. So, you know, as God is beginning to heal me in that, I'm starting to see Wow. You know, you got to love people who are differently than you. You have to be strong and, and respect people. And you might have to respect people enough to say, I, I honor you. And on this thing, we're going to like totally separate and like we, we can't go there. <laughs> we have to have a bigger boundary on that topic because like we're, we're totally of two different schools. But when push comes to shove, like in the workplace where you, most of you spend more hours at work than you do anywhere else. And that's where my mantle is. That's where my ministry is, is in the workplace. Most of you are going to spend more hours with the people at work than you will ever spend any other. You'll spend more hours with the people at work than you do even with your family. And so I, I feel summoned by God to encourage you big bigger, okay? You got to find unity with diversity, okay? You've got to find unity not with like conformity where everybody starts to be alike. Let me be radical here. If everybody's got to be alike, that's called a cult. Oh, that's cultic. <laughs> the uh, kingdom is not cultic. The kingdom is very diverse. As a matter of fact, Father God and the Holy Spirit, even sh they demonstrate the gifts of the Spirit in a very different way through very unique people. God didn't make any of us alike. Do you think he's into diversity? Yeah. <laughs> God didn't make any of us exactly the same. We're, we may have moral and ethical conscience pr principles that are completely different, but I still believe we could have a cup of coffee together and have peace. And if it was push come to shove and it was a violent situation and it was dangerous, man, I'd want to be standing on the front lines with people who disagree with me than fighting people. I would want to be standing on the front lines fighting for the freedom of America, even with people who believe differently than me, live differently than me, and love differently than me, than standing on the front lines thinking that the very person next to me is going to be my enemy. Uh-uh. God created diversity. And us humans, you know, in our weakness sometimes, we just get all hell-bent on making everybody try to be like us. I am positioned by God on the media mountain, and there was a lot of fear and worry and, gosh, trigger words for trauma. My friends, I'm a copywriter. I'm a direct response marketer. I was watching it. There were neuro-linguistic programming words being used to terrify people so they would vote a certain way. And then when one candidate wins and the other doesn't, there's fear and there's worry and there's trauma. And you know what? The media does that. Unfortunately, because they make money with it. Just one position that was marketed was a $120 million campaign. I, 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 I'm flabbergasted by those figures. And I wake up this morning and I go, God, I thank you for the diversity in the people around me. 
I thank you for people who are differently than me, who believe differently than me, who might even have convictions differently that you say to me, Sandy, be the bigger girl in love. You might not always agree on everything. You might not all have dinner together all at one time. But when it comes into the workplace, when it comes to going to work where you spend most time together, it's going to be important, Sandy, for you to love people. It's going to be important for you to love people at work because how are we going to get a job done if we're hating each other? Like, how are, how are we going to serve in the marketplace if we hate each other? You can't. And so I, today, am going to choose to love. I'm going to choose to overcome. I'm going to choose to overlook. There might be some people you might have to love from a distance. There might be some people you might have to have boundary with and choose not to be around to love but don't let hate govern don't let a spirit of offense rise up mm -mm. don't let murderous rage rage rise up if you're speaking anything over our nation speak love speak love speak love go into atmospheres and say i release the kingdom i release life i release love and then when push comes to shove and god calls you to be the bigger person because somebody believes differently than you Somebody believes differently than you about something that is a moral and ethical issue, but God still calls you to be polite, still calls you to love, still calls you to protect them if they are in danger. Let me just say that because I'm a radical girl and I'm getting a lot of courage lately. I was gang raped in my 20s. Oh my word, my doggies are going crazy. And let me put it this way. If you saw somebody being gang raped and it was time to protect them and it was time, hey, my puppies are going crazy. If you saw somebody being gang raped on the streets and it was time to protect somebody, are you going to stop them and go, oh, wait a second, before I protect you, before I like lamb base and pound those people who are hurting you, who did you vote for? Because like I only want to protect you if you voted for like who I voted for. If you saw somebody being gang raped, and, uh, you know, I'm more for conversations than anything. If you saw somebody being gang raped, would you say, okay, so wait a second. Do you believe in this or do you believe in this? Because I'm not going to protect you from these people if you believe in this, but I'm going to protect you if you believe in this. No! Justice would rise up in you even if you don't believe in God, even if you're an atheist, even if no matter who, what you are, justice would rise up in front of you and say, stop! I'm going to defend somebody from a gang rape. Sometimes those kinds of situations are where you might find love. If you're sitting in a cancer ward today and there's babies wasting away with cancer and their mommies and daddies are around you and you got mommies and daddies in the cancer ward around you and some are Hindus and some are Muslims and some are atheists and some are Christians, and some are Catholics, and some are like, you know, let's go on and name every religion in the world. What are you going to do? You're going to get a cup of coffee and offer an encouraging word to the mommy and daddy whose baby's wasting away in cancer with cancer like you are? I hope so. I hope you will. I hope at that point you'll say, just like you should in the workplace today, I know who I believe and I know what I believe, but at this moment I choose love. And in our differences, I'm going to find harmony, and I'm going to find unity, and I'm going to be a source of comfort, and I'm going to be a source of love. Be the bigger person today, my friends. I love you. Take care.